up, everybody? Welcome to Fire West 3 Raw TV. You got a remote control on my butt. That's what you get for shooting videos in your living room. <laughs> All right, today, guys, I want to talk about something that um, I figure since we're on lockdown, we've been doing a lot of talking about random things. We could do some learning, too, right? I mean, I feel like I learn things in a much different way than I shouldn't say a lot of people. I'd say I learn things by reading and visualization, too, like graphs and pictures and stuff like that, media. The more. Um, types of media that's describing something to me, I can learn better from. So this may actually help you guys learn some things that, and it's very good for beginners. This is not like, it's not advanced stuff, but also I'd say probably three or four years ago, my uh, my good friend, he was actually my coach for a while, Phil Hernan, was explaining to me that recovery is the most un misunderstood thing of bodybuilding. It's not diet, it's not training, it's not steroids, it's recovery. And that led me down a rabbit hole because I was like, he's right. Now, let me kind of explain. So as you're trying to build muscle, your muscle cannot be built until your body has recovered. After your body recovers, then muscle growth occurs. Now, look at it like this. Um, our bodies essentially are made to heal. That's what they do. It's healing, right? So when you get injured, right, what is, everybody wants you to stop, calm down, you know, take some time out and heal, rest, recover, recuperate, right? So they use that term recover recovery he tore his rotator cuff he's in recovery now from the surgery um get into a car accident they're resting comfortably in the recovery you know room at the the hospital whatever recovery so at the point that the body's trying to heal that is your body recovering right okay so it's healing recovering it's the same thing so when we go into the gym and we cause this stress this people like to say the tearing down which draws this this picture of muscles being like ripped apart and bleeding inside. I mean, it draws this picture. The muscle has to be broken down so it can rebuild, right? What does that really mean? What it means is that you're going to do something that the body's not really technically made to do, right? Our bodies are made to basically in the wild, we'll say, right? Pick something up that has to be picked up, put something on movement, running, stuff like that. But we've always had different types of people, right? Think about it like this, right? As far as muscle recovery, muscle growth, there's always been bigger and stronger people than other people. What I mean by that is we have Larry Wheels, who's been extremely strong from the beginning. Michael Hearn, these people in the wild would be the people that would be carrying shit, moving shit, picking shit up. Then we have people that carry less muscle mass and are less strong, but they're super fast, agile, and they're good at fighting. Let's take Bruce Lee, for example. You now have, if we had a family or tribe or group or whatever you want to call it you know throughout the years and centuries it's been called something else but they had tribes we now have families stuff like that bruce lee would be one of the warriors larry wheels would be one of the people that moves blocks and shit helps build the house by moving the the materials around stuff like that so there's always been different body types and different types of people for different jobs in societies right now what's really interesting is all of our bodies can become better adapt at pretty much anything if we adapt our bodies to the situation or what's going on. So adaptation, recovery, recovery and adaptation kind of go hand in hand. So now you go in the gym and you break down the muscle. Basically what you're doing is you're causing that muscle to work on a stimulus that is not necessarily normal or natural for the body. Okay, laying in the bench press position, trying to bench press twice your body weight. The only time in nature that would happen is if a tree fell on you which we have this adrenaline that is a hormone that kicks in that actually can fire all the muscle fibers at once or many muscle fibers at once rather than in order like when you're training. And you see, heard about the, the woman who had the adrenaline spike and picked up the car that fell on her kid. She picked it right up off the kid, right out of the blue, just reached down and picked up a car. How is that possible? Because our, body, our, body, our bodies are capable of doing that for survival. It's not about building a better physique or being bigger or looking better, right? That's just veins. What we do is try to put a vein interpretation of something that is natural and naturally occurring in our bodies to make it do something that it never was meant to do. Like our bodies don't like to carry that extra muscle mass as bodybuilders. What happens is you'll carry it as long as you're stimulating and the body thinks it needs to carry it. But if you stop training, it's not like you've built that muscle and definitely your body's cool with carrying it. It'll start to decrease the muscle mass because it no longer needs it for the job and it's not comfortable with it. It's not it doesn't jive with what your body's supposed to do. So what we do as bodybuilders, fitness enthusiasts, competitors, whatever, we go in the gym and we start to use weights that are easily comparable to stuff that we do in our daily life. When you first walk in the gym, you're trying to bench press just the bar. I mean, granted, there's going to be something 45 pounds that you could pick up that, you know, your mom wants you to put this fucking box on the top shelf and pick it up and you're pushing it. Like, there's going to be things that kind of mimic that. 
And as you train, the body adapts and gets stronger by using these loads that you can barely move and your body goes, okay, we gotta keep up with that workload. So let's make it a little bit easier. So now at this point, we have to step back and say, okay, my body's adapted, that's easier. Now what? We increase the resistance. So we use progressive resistance. Now, a lot of times you hear people say, well, it doesn't matter whether you have the volume or the intensity. They're talking about studies that were controlled by scientists and doctors. So those doctors and scientists find a one rep max, three rep, rep, five rep max. What they do is they calculate everything and then they give the weights to those people that are trying to create the new physique to find out what's going on. But really, realistically in society, nobody's out there calculating those numbers and they're not keeping themselves accountable. They just hear the volume, the intensity, the weight, it doesn't really matter, just keep doing your workouts and all wind up in the same place, which is not necessarily true for most people. You have to track your progress, then be able to increase those workloads through progressive resistance to even get to the point where your body continues responding. Now that being said, after your body breaks down or goes through the whole system of exerting large amounts of energy in short periods of time, like an hour of extreme workouts and stuff like that, your body needs to replenish those energy systems. It needs to replenish all the things that you got out of it, vitamins, minerals, water, um, amino acids, carbohydrates, all those things need to be replenished before your body build upon what it already has. Because you're depleting the body while you're actually doing this work. You then have to refeed the body in order to get it to recover, in order for it finally to grow. So you have to recover your body before the muscle growth even occurs. So how do you do that? Well, that's another thing that you have to pay attention to. So it varies from person to person, it's very different. But you can go and, and train hard and train hard and train hard and train hard, and all of a sudden you feel like you're not gaining any progress. You feel like you're going backwards. Like you can't figure out what's going on. Your body's trying to tell you something. More than likely that's not able to recover. So you have one of two reasons why you're not growing muscle. You're not training hard enough and using the right stimulus, or you're pushing too hard too long and the body can't recover, all right? Or you're not feeding your body properly so it can't recover. So you either can't recover or you're not using enough stimulus to get the results you want. So now here we have, as your body's telling you, like, I'm not doing it anymore, and your strength plateaus, you know now, look, I've gone too far. I'm not recovering. Now you take a look at your diet. You take a look at your rest. You take a look at um, supplements. You take a look at the drugs you're taking. Whatever the case may be, you take a look at all that stuff, and more than likely, you're going to see something in there that is a little bit off. It's probably usually the diet because you need more amino acids, more carbohydrates, more essential fatty acids. Those things control your hormones. And your hormones are what's going to control your muscle growth, not necessarily the food. You have to stimulate your body, feed the food, and then the hormones, then they start to, to react to the food and the stimulus from the training. Then you grow new muscle tissue, you get bigger. So recovering is absolutely 100% imperative for you to even grow. But people automatically think, I go in the gym, I do something. And then I go home, I'm going to get bigger. And then they spin their wheels for years and years and years and not getting bigger. Well, you're not handling workloads that are enough for the body to adapt, to want to get bigger and need to use, um, you know, need to create new tissue to support what you're doing. So there's no way that's going to happen. You have to use those workloads. You have to track it, at least for a little while. Like using a workout log, trying to beat that log. You're increasing that resistance and using progressive resistance over time. Your body has no choice if it's being fed properly with rest and supplements and drugs to get bigger and stronger. But that's the whole key. Like, you don't care. You can take all the drugs in the world, eat right, train hard, whatever. And if you're not recovering because you're pushing your body too hard, you're not sleeping enough, your hormones are fucked up due to genetics, you're not, you know, you're taking in so many processed foods that that throws your thyroid, your insulin out of whack, whatever the case may be. Like, you're not understanding. Recovery is the key to muscle growth. All those other things can be adjusted and worked on and understood and changed. But recovery is the one thing that people don't pay attention to. And that's one thing that holds people up. So... I encourage you guys to look more into how the body recovers before it grows. Muscle recovery, body recovery, central nervous system recovery, which is a big thing that keeps people from growing. They don't even realize that, that the muscle, muscular system can recover very quickly and adapt. We're talking within a day, your, your muscles can be fully adapted, but your central nervous system doesn't adapt that fast, which that is usually what holds people back, not the fact that their muscles are not recovering. That central nervous system can take such a beating to when it drops, you now have those acute and sometimes chronic symptoms of overtraining but you also get sick a lot. You can't sleep right. Like there's a lot of things that go on that make you realize something is going on. But the bottom line is you have to recover before you grow. Paying attention to recovery will let you know it's time to train again. If you're sitting there and you go, man, I went to train today and I, I mean, all my lifts went down today. What the fuck is going on? Well, you're not recovered from the previous workout. Now, Mike Mentor has a lot of stuff about this. Um, Arthur Jones, of course, Dorian Yates, a lot about recovery. And of course, Phil Hernan too, a lot about recovery. These guys are really smart with this stuff. And I think that um, this is a topic that needs to be tackled by many people, not just me. I think some of the, the smarter, more intelligent people with the PhDs and stuff should talk more about this because they have all the 
technical terms. My thing is, I don't feel like you need the technical terms. As long as you know how to apply things, you don't need to go and learn every single little word. I pronounce things wrong. I absolutely don't understand some of the technical terms that are used and stuff, but I understand that adaption and recovery leads to muscle growth, right? And I understand that if my body's reacting a certain way, I need to look at why it's reacting that way. And a lot of times it is the recovery and that slows down the adaptation and the muscle growth. So recovery is an absolute big key that many people don't talk about. And most people don't even know about. They think recovery and muscle growth are the same thing. Oh, I recovered. I'm going to the gym. My, my body grew to muscle. Recovery takes place before muscle growth, which is really what I think throws people off. They, they're missing a step. And that step is one of the reasons why I'm able to move that scale any direction I want at any point in time. I know as long as my body's recovering, I'm going to build muscle. I know if it's not, I'm going to be stagnant. So I need to focus on what's either kind of binding me up from recovering and stopping me from recovering or find out what the deal is, whether or not I'm pushing myself too hard, whatever the deal is. But there's a big thing about recovery that literally is a key to get you to look at all the things in the that are in play. And a lot of times one thing will stand right out to you because you'll be like, well, I'm training hard, man. I'm making progress here. Um, you know, I'm sleeping enough, but ah, I haven't been hitting my macros for about a month. I've been missing about 30 grams of protein a day. You'd be surprised. Five to six grams of protein a day would be enough to make you not grow. It'll be enough to make you not recover, not heal. You'd be surprised at how little things, they say the devil's in the details, and I agree with that. The little things make big impacts. So hopefully this will give you guys a little bit of an idea on uh, something to, to do during the COVID-19 lockdown and stuff. Research recovery and muscle growth, research adaptation and muscle growth, research all of that stuff. And you don't need to know the technical terms, just how to put them in play and listen to your body to figure out what's going on and get more muscle growth. Bouncing training at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. If it's a fight by string, doc the blog. It's the more muscle growth bicep. Let me pull that sleeve up. Oh, damn it. More muscle growth bicep. And we are out.